Nobody's buying GPUs. Nobody's buying Reddit's API access and I'm buying Apple. I just, I'm gonna buy a, a MacBook. It's happening at this point for gaming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, June 9th, 2023. And if in case you can't tell, I'm home, back from Computex, back from my South Africa trip. I, I'm exhausted. Jet lag is brutal right now, but I'm bringing you the hottest tech news and we're gonna dive on into talking about how GPU sales are at the lowest point that they've been in decades with John Petty research coming out and showing that GPU sales are continuing to decline. The Q1 numbers being down from the previous quarter of the previous year and Nvidia and AMD and Intel having changing ups in their market share. So totally, it looks like 6.3 million discrete graphics cards were sold in Q1, which is one of the lowest figures in decades. As you can see from these charts, the numbers just continue to decline and plummet with every single GPU manufacturer being down besides Intel, who's still gaining some sort of market share being up to 4% total. AMD is down to 12% and Nvidia is down to 84%. So it looks like people aren't buying graphics cards. We kind of already knew this. All of the launches have been kind of duds. Companies have been dropping the price. It's not necessarily been a great time. Let me know, have have you and your friends been upgrading? You Do you know fewer people buying GPUs these days? What about you? Yeah. Also, have you and your friends heard about today's video sponsor? Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. I was unfortunately recently in a car accident with a friend in the car. Thankfully, it was super minor with no injuries and my car was barely dinged, but as soon as we were hit, the thought flashed through my mind of how much of a hassle things were going to be if I was injured or my passenger was injured. And while I thankfully didn't have to use them, with Morgan & Morgan, submitting an injury claim is so easy. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave your couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records and doctor's bills all from your phone. You can even text your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in a car accident. If you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. While Morgan & Morgan might be for the people, it looks like TSMC is for Nvidia because it's being announced that while TSMC is already at capacity for making all of the chips that they make for all of the companies, Apple, Nvidia, AMD, looks like they're gonna be adding more capacity or rushing the ability to add more capacity for Nvidia and the AI speed run that's going on right now to produce as many chips as possible with TSMC reportedly pledging an extra 10,000 wafers to Nvidia for the duration of this year and potentially even upgrading that for next year. Nvidia being one of the biggest companies in the AI space, TSMC moving, making moves for them to be able to enjoy that. And you can enjoy faster SSD speeds because Nvidia dropped a driver update that allows faster GPU decompression on PCI Express 5.0 SSDs, allowing you to get 17 percent better GPU decompression on what are the fastest drives that are out there. I still personally, they were at Computex. I still personally have not had a PCI Express 5.0 SSD in my ether anywhere near me. Haven't had the ability to check it out. So I, I'm hoping one will go on sale sometime soon. And maybe Reese could bring one of those to us for UFD deals. Hi. Oh, oh where'd you come from? What deals do you have for us under desk gnome? Today's a rapid fire episode. I got some special stuff, but it's not prepared right now. Hi. Do you want to just sit here for the remainder of the episode? I'm gonna sit here. Okay. It's better than uh, under, under the, the luggage compartment in the plane. <laughs> How did you even get here? Yeah, it was a long walk. I got a Reese. And switch. Yeah, Junior. this feels weird. Okay, I'll leave. Hey, welcome back to you to deals bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Your boy, Reese B in America. Your resident South African in America. What's up? We got deals. Starting off with the Arctic P12 Max 120 millimeter case fans going for only $8.99, making it 31% off. But next up, we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM kit with this particular 32 gig RAM kit running at 3,200 megahertz at CL16 going for only $64.99, making it 43% off. 43%? 
That's more than 42%. And then last but not least, we have the amazing AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 3D going for only $289.10. What? That is so cheap. Holy smokes. That's a deal. It's a UFD deal. Oh. Oh, we do that. Yeah, we no. Breaking the fourth wall. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Reese is here. And switch. Well, thank you, Reese. I appreciate those deals. But you know what's a terrible deal? Having to pay for Reddit access. People don't want to be doing that. My poor Apollo. Which is exactly what's happening. Apollo announcing that they are shutting down June 30th. This is one of the companies that said because of the cost increase with Reddit's API access, they were going to have to pay upwards of $20 million per year based on their current user base. They were unable to sustain that with their current cash flow, and they said that they were going to be discussing what they're going to do moving forward. Turns out they're going to be getting rid of it. However, interestingly, it appears to be a little bit of drama between Apollo and Reddit, not just for the money thing, but also with claims of extortion because it turns out that the founder of Apollo said something to the effect of, haha, you could cut me a check for 10 million and I'd leave instead of me paying you 20 million, to which allegedly the CEO of Reddit said, Apollo threatened us, said they'll make it easy if Reddit gave them $10 million. This guy's behind the scenes is coercing us. He's threatening us. Who do we trust, Apollo or Reddit? Well, it looks like Reddit wants to be trusted because they're gonna be bringing out an AMA today in case you wanna participate in what is likely going to be a large crack storm just raining upon the CEO. That's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be bad because they're going to talk about all of the API changes and how thousands of subreddits are planning to go dark on June 12th for 48 hours as part of protests with regards to the API access. Pretty sure I know exactly what the CEO is going to say. AI steal your data. We need money because we go public. This is good for us. So think of it as good for you too, because we have more money. Mm -hmm. be. They're trying to go public. That's exactly all of this is. They're trying to increase their balance sheets to make it so that they have a good valuation. There are other banks that have come out recently saying that they're cutting Reddit's valuation, especially since they're having their data taken for AI generation. It's just, this is not gonna be good. I don't, the, the only way it can be good is if they roll back. If he's gonna try to explain it, we know what he's gonna say. We need more money. G give me more money. But they are saying, however, that when it comes to certain accessibility apps, you don't necessarily have to pay for API access. Non-commercial enterprises can potentially have the ability to have a cheaper exemption from their pricing model. We'll see what that specifically means. But overall, they they want more money. You giving them the money? None. Reese giving them no sense. money. I've missed this. I've missed the it's back weird. and forth it's and hotness. <laughs> We used to do this all the time. Uh, except I was sitting off camera or behind the camera, technically. Yeah, well, you can sit next to me. Yeah. You can be my, uh, my hot news. I'm your guy in the chair. He's my guy in the chair. And we were the guys in the chair on the airline flight, which this is why I'm talking about this article. United's talking about bringing out 4K OLED screens to some of their flights. Would that have been an improvement? Oh, yeah. I don't know if they need to be 4K. They're not, like... not. It's they, like this size. They're tiny. You don't need them. But they are saying that they're going to roll out 300,000 units of these Panasonic aviation things. The only thing I have to really question besides needing 4K is their OLED. Those like airplane menus are going to burn in so bad. Like that's there's so much burn in happening. They, they got to have some like special sauce for pixel shifting to make sure it doesn't stay there. I just 4K OLED on flights. It's also going to have Bluetooth. Actually, Kyler and I on one of our flights to South Africa, it was the best entertainment system we had where it did have Bluetooth, it had all of the features, it had USB-C charging, which these new ones are supposed to have up to 100 watt charging. I think we had 65 watts on ours. It was very, very good. It was a newer, I can't remember what specific plane it was. It was that one. Yeah. I'm so tired from this trip. Do you know how hard it is to go from America to South Africa to Taiwan, back to South Africa, back to America? I've done that twice now in my lifetime. How does that make you feel? I'm exhausted. I'm tired, my guy. But I got a race. Hey. And now I got a reason to actually switch on over to Mac, which this is the Mac boy in the UFD team. Because as it turns out with the WWDC announcement that Apple brought forth with their gaming mode on Sonoma and the fact that they're going to make it easier for games to be ported over to their metal API, they're making it actually really easy to bring games over. As in, you can do it yourself right now on an Apple Silicon chip. So it turns out that they're going to be using a Proton-like compatibility layer that we've seen on 
things like Linux with Valve making that readily and accessible to SteamOS on the Steam Deck and because they're using Crossover, which is an application that uses Wine to bring games over to Mac, this is going to allow you to run certain games much easier on Apple. And alongside this, Crossover released a press release on June 1st saying that they now support DX12 games on Apple Silicon, which means you can bring new games to Apple. Apple's been kind of talking about it. They showed off Resident Evil Village last year. They showed off Death Stranding this year. They did announce that the medium should be coming as well. And what we're finding is that you can now port it yourself with somebody getting Cyberpunk 2077 to run on a regular M1 MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. However, the issue here is that it's 1440 by 900 running on Ultra and the frame rate's not great but it's cyberpunk running locally on a MacBook. The only way you could do this previously is by cloud gaming. And also being found out that you can run Diablo 4 on an M2 Max using macOS Sonoma. This one's running a little bit better. They claim that they got roughly 80 FPS in game, as you can see right here on an M2 Max chip, which makes a lot more sense because the M2 Max is a huge step up from the regular M1. So I'm excited to see what even an M2 Ultra could do on something like cyberpunk. Even 1080p medium settings, if you could start developing there to potentially get better setups in the future, I am very much looking forward to this. It's still so weird to me. It makes me wanna go buy a Mac just to play games, just to do a video to see how far has gaming come on Macs. We've done that before. I really wanna see what this looks like. I. I'm very much excited to see where this is gonna go. It does look like Apple's finally starting to tweak the dials and knobs to get gaming working. This is one of the things that I've said Apple can do. They have the cash to invest in the software development. Valve did it for Linux. Apple can do it for macOS. They just have to choose to do it. And now it looks like it's happening. Apple handhelds win. It's called an iPad. I know. Or an iPhone with the handheld thing. Or the Reality Pro. Those have M2 chips. Don't, you can play video games there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now I'm, now I'm playing out this whole thing. And now we're going to be playing out Reese being here with hot news. Does that mean I got to leave? Uh, not the country. You can leave just the set. We'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news on Monday with, with more Reese. I guarantee you he's staying I'm for leaving. a little bit. I'm leaving. He's staying for just a scooch time. When you when are you leaving? Yeah. Oh, don't leave me.